So we discussed that R4 is the unknown one. So well, now we are going to find out the expression to find out the unknown resistance. Therefore, R4 is equal to R3 into R2 by R1. In this way, we can find out the value of unknown resistance which is in a bridge circuit to balance the circuit in a bridge shape or to balance the Kirchhoff's law in each and every loop. So for R4 is equal to R3 into R2 by R1. Next we are going to see one more application of the Kirchhoff's law nothing but the meter bridge. But meter bridge is the simplest form of Wheatstone bridge. Now we will see the meter bridge. This meter bridge is a simplified form of Wheatstone bridge. of Wheatstone bridge. The construction of the Wheatstone bridge is like this. This one, let us write some name, mm, some, some x to y. This x y is the metal strip. Metal wire of one meter length. Now there are three metal strips you can see. One metal strip is like this, another metal strip is B, another metal strip is C. A, B, C are metal strips. Metal strips. Now, one known resistance is connected in between the metal strips of A to B, second end of A to the first end of the B. Unknown resistance S yes, is connected in between B and C, second end of B to the first end of C. Now we are going to find out this unknown resistance. In case of Wheatstone bridges, we have find with respect to the currents and potentials. Here we are going to find out the unknown resistance with respect to the balancing length because resistance is directly proportional to the length of the wire. So listen carefully. In between this one middle point of the B metal strip we have connected one galvanometer. Galvanometer always gives the direction of current at the same time which can sense the low electric currents, low fields. So this galvanometer is connected to this arrow mark. This arrow mark is a jockey. A pen type electrical device. Now we will after connecting this thing. This is one EMF. This is plug key. So now the connection of the circuit was given. Now the direction of current is flowing through all the metal strips and resistors. Now this jockey is moving from X to Y along the metal wires. This known resistances are this unknown resistance is yes. So Whenever this jockey is moving from X to Y at one particular length means while it is traveling like this, like this, like this, you can see uh, simultaneously we should see the uh, value of the galvanometer at one particular point galvanometer, galvanometer needle will be exactly straight means jockey is moving correspondingly along the wire one meter scale is also fixed. So yet one particular length of the metal wire galvanometer reading will be exactly straight upward. That means there is no current is passing through the galvanometer. At that point, please find out the length. That length is called balancing length. This balancing length, we can say it as L1 is corresponding to the resistance R because we have moved from here to here, not from here to here. That's why it is resistance R. Now it is meter scale means 100 centimeters. Let us suppose at 40 centimeters balancing length, galvanometer reading is zero. Why galvanometer reading is zero? Because there is no current. What is the connection between this current to the resistance? V is equal to IR. Therefore, I is equal to V by R. When R is equal to infinity, I is equal to 0. So, at this particular length, means resistance is directly proportional to length again. So, at this particular length or balancing length, R is becoming infinity of the wire, then I is becoming 0. Therefore, this balancing length L1 is to the 
R resistance. What about the balancing length L2 for the unknown resistance? From the opposite side, then move the jockey towards the R, towards the X. Suppose if it is L1, automatically this point from this end will become 100 minus L1. Therefore, again for S resistance, for S balancing length, will become 100 minus L1 that refers to S. So, R by S is equal to, we can write RCM L1 by RCM into 100 minus L1. R and RCM can get cancelled. Therefore, R by S is equal to L1 by 100 minus L1. We should find out the S value. That's why S is equal to R into 100 minus L1 by L1. So the unknown resistance we can find out with a known resistance into 100 minus L1 by L1. This is the way to measure the unknown resistance with the help of meter bridge by balancing the lengths. This is one of the application of uh, Hitchhoff's laws that is called as potentiometer. This potentiometer is useful in two ways. The first use is which, which can uh, compare the EMFs. Second use is to compare the internal resistances. What is the construction? The metal strip is folded like this. Two, these two are the balancing lengths. Now this B is the power supply. This R is the variable resistance or rheostat. Power supply. This is a rheostat or variable resistance. Plug key. At the point A, these are the two cells. Has E1 and E2 EMFs of resistances R1 and R2. And this is the switch box. This E1 cell is connected to 1. E2 cell is connected to 2. 3 is the output. Suppose if you want to find out the balancing length with respect to the first cell, then you should close this path, then the path will be 1, 3. If you want to balance the lengths with respect to the cell E2, then close this path, this one, and the path will be 2, 3. So now one galvanometer is connected, uh, which can travel along the metal strip to find out the balancing lengths. First of all, I want to find out the balancing length with respect to the E1, where pi is the potential drop per unit length. So therefore, what is the direction? A13 GN1 A. One three means I have cut the two. Means there is no input is given to the two. I am comparing the EMFs. First place the one cell which is E1 EMF and having internal resistance R1. So A13 G N1 A. This is the loop. Now this galvanometer is moving along the folded strips. So in this direction, what is the equation potential drop per unit length is equal to pi. The potential drop into length is equal to EMF. The phi L1 in galvanometer it is 0 minus E1 is equal to 0. Therefore, pi L1 is equal to E1 pi is equal to E1 by L1. So, ratio of EMFs is directly proportional to the balancing lengths with respect to the positions applied. So, this is the circuit which is useful to compare the EMF of the two cells with the help of potentiometer. Next use of the potentiometer is to balance the internal resistances. This is the circuit to compare the internal resistances of a cell. Here, the circuit is a small change with respect to the previous one. These are all common K1, C and the metal strip which is folded like this and galvanometer, balancing length all are same. But one resistance box is added in place of the first cell and here one K1 key is present. Now, if this key is open, no current will flow. 
throughout the circuit. In the absence of electric field, in the absence of no current, the potential difference is nothing but the EMF. Whenever key 2 is closed, then current will transfer through the resistance box of the, with respect to the cell, then it will come, it will convert to the terminal potential difference, nothing but the capital V. So, when K1 is open, it converts to EMF. What is EMF? Phi L1. When K1 is open, yes, no current will pass through, then the galvanometer is just simply move on the metal strips at one particular length, it will give the balancing length, that length is L1 in the direction of same A K1 G N1 A. Now, just close the K1 gate or close the K1 key. Whenever you close the K1, what you will understand, current will pass through it. Then at the ends, we can find out the terminal potential difference. When K2 is, K1 is closed. If it is closed, what is the direction A K1? G N to A. It will become terminal potential difference. What is the terminal potential difference? V is equal to pi L2. Therefore, this is the equation 1, this is the equation 2. E by V is equal to, we will get L1 by L2. Now we are going to find out the ratio of E and V. We will get what is the ratio of the internal resistances. Now we will see the E by V ratio. We know that V is equal to E minus IR. V is equal to IR, therefore E minus IR. From this we can write I into R plus R is equal to E. So, E by V is equal to I into R plus R by I R. I I get cancelled. Therefore, E by V is equal to R plus R by R. This R plus R by R is equal to L1 by L2. Now, we are going to find out the smaller value. So, R plus R by R is equal to L1 by L2. This equation will turn by 1 plus R by R. R is equal to L1 by L2. R by R is equal to L1 by L2 minus 1. Therefore, internal resistance small r is equal to capital R into L1 by L2 minus 1. This is the expression for internal resistance. With this help, we can next in place of E2, place another cell of E1 EMF. Then you will get the same equations. Then we can find out the ratio of small r1 by small r2. Like this, we can find out the comparison of internal resistances. These are all the examples and applications of Kirchhoff's laws. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.